Hey everybody, Jess here, Key Tara, welcome to you all. I'm just gonna do a real quick general reading. I don't know who this will be for or what it's about. It's not Zodiac sign specific. So let's just say a quick blessing. We'll find out if this is your story today or not, all right? Holy Spirit, thank you for being with us here today and in every breath that we take. We ask that these messages be received by those who are meant to hear them, amen. All righty, I wanna start with this vice versa tarot. Find out how you guys are all doing. Oh. All righty. Well, I have the Nine of Cups in the reverse, and that could be a few different things. Usually when I have cards that fly across the room or um, under a table or off of the table, it, it's usually an indication that somebody doesn't want to talk about something. With the Nine of Cups in the reverse, this can be an energy of over-drinking specifically, or this can be someone who's hiding the fact that they're um, very unhappy in their lives. I have the Ace of Swords under that, which is some clarity, some honesty, some truthfulness. Um, someone here may be struggling financially a little bit or maybe struggling through a separation of swords. I have the Strength card out on top of that. Um, you're asking yourself to be strong, whoever you are, and it feels like, um, you know, anytime the Strength card comes up, the devil is always lurking somewhere. And the devil represents energies that are toxic. They can be... Um, Addictions, for sure. They can be abusive relationships or toxic relationships. They can be um, unhealthy habits of some sort. Nine of Swords. Oh my goodness. This is someone who feels quite imprisoned in their space. Um, the Nine of Swords is an energy of anxiety, stress, worry, tossing and turning, sleepless nights. Someone who's really struggling and I feel like you're at a crossroads, whoever you are. It's this energy of either either you stay or you go. Either you make a change or you don't. Um, oh my, you got some good cards here, whoever you are. Um, I have the Three of Swords here, which is the energy of an ending. A breakup doesn't necessarily have to be within a relationship, but it's an ending that is painful, difficult, um, not easy to endure. And I have the Chariot card here where this is someone who is ready to burn some bridges mm -hmm. in the best of ways. You see, you can't go back there. The road leads forward, not backwards. Okay, let me switch those. Cool. All right, I'm going to grab another deck and I'm going to clarify. I think with this Mariel Tarot. And I got the chariot on the bottom of the deck here. Nicely done. Um, the chariot is Cancerian energy. You may be uh, Cancer, and that may, or you may have that heavily in your chart somewhere. Uh, the chariot card is someone who is it's re someone who's ready to make a major move in their lives. It doesn't necessarily mean like a physical relocation, but it can mean. Um, a major change. What was I saying? You can never go back to that place again. Mm -hmm. All right. Did I even shuffle these? I don't know. Let's do it again. No, that was just on the bottom of the deck. Yeah, I've got the Ten of Swords when I split the deck. Um... I've got the King of Wands on one side and I've got the Ten of Swords on the other. The Ten of Swords is the Minor Arcana of the Death card. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, for me as a reader, it's the Minor Arcana of the Death card. And this would be putting an end to toxic situations in your three-dimensional life. Um, that chariot um, is moving on from things emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. This King of Wands energy is someone who's very brave. You don't have to be a masculine energy to be embodying this, but it just feels like whoever I'm talking to, you got a lot of Cancer here, you got some Leo on here, and with this King of Wands, it's Aries Leo Sagittarius energy, but it beyond that, it's someone who um, is very brave and they don't back down from a challenge. Even though you may feel a little bit weak right now, um, you are absolutely capable of doing whatever it is you are meant to be doing here in this situation. All right, tell me about this Nine of Cups here and this Ace of Swords. 
have the seven of swords in the reverse. What was I saying about how when I have a card that flies off the table, it's a card, it's usually someone who doesn't feel comfortable about talking about, doesn't feel comfortable talking about something or someone who isn't ready to talk about something. This seven of swords energy is, um, it's the energy of deception. Um, someone who is lying about something, someone who doesn't feel comfortable telling the truth. Um, and I have it in the reverse. So we have something that's coming out here about someone. Now, this can be your energy or this can be someone in your immediate environment or someone that just comes to mind in this reading for you. Um, but the Seven of Swords in the reverse is someone who's finally gotten caught in a trap of some sort um, or that possibly in their own trap. This is someone who was kind of led astray by something that's kind of a shiny object's energy, but it's much deeper than that. Um, there's something very illusionary to this, this Seven of Swords energy. Um, someone thought they were going to get something they didn't get, possibly in a relationship, possibly within themselves. I'm not sure what we're even talking about here yet, but and I've got the two of swords again on the bottom of the deck. That's twice out. That is someone who is at a crossroads. So you've already got two repeat cards out here. You know that? That's good. Um, whoever I'm reading for, you have a very strong energy. Absolutely. Um, this two of swords is about being at a, at a, a crossroads in your life. It's time to make a decision. And you are very strong. You can do this, whatever it is um, that you need to do here. You got this. I have the Ace of Wands in the reverse. It goes right with that Ace of Swords. Mm. Oh, man. This is someone who's got like blood on their hands, not literally, but um, this is someone who's being found out about something. And whatever this was that someone's trying to hide here, I don't think this person's a bad person. I never think anybody's a bad person. I assume that there are circumstances. I assume that there is an upbringing. I assume that someone became the way that they are honestly for whatever reason. Um, I just don't believe in bad people. So don't think for a second I'm judging this person. But this is, um, I'm reading for some, about someone here who was trying to hide something of significance about themselves and something's caught up with them and it's kind of like caught red-handed. Um, with this Ace of Wands in the reverse, this is someone who's experiencing a fallout in their life, something that's become kind of a powder keg in some way. And they're wishing that they could like shield themselves from this. It's a kind of a dark energy, the Seven of Cups on the bottom of the deck. There's about to be a rebalancing with this temperance energy under that. I'm going to leave those both in the deck and I'm just going to keep shuffling. Oh, snap. I have the Wheel of Fortune in the reverse. Um, mm, the Wheel of Fortune in the reverse can be a return of negative karma coming back on someone. I just see 818 on the counter. Um... I feel, so in a lot of my readings lately, especially the zodiac sign based readings, I've been noticing there's a real energy of karmic return right now. And I, I was recording the fire signs yesterday or the day before, whenever it was. And I remember saying, if you've done good things, expect for karma to pay out in a good way. If you've done something not so great, expect for karma to pay out negatively, you know? And with the Wheel of Fortune in the reverse, this can be a spot of bad luck. It can be, um, but it really feels kind of karmic here because I'm reading for someone who has hidden a lot about themselves. And quite honestly, I feel like I'm reading for someone who's saying like, when the truth comes out, it's going to be a relief because of all of this anxiety, stress, and worry. Um, I'm going to dig a little bit farther here. I remember that Nine of Swords felt very much like a mental prison for someone. I have the Nine of Cups out again. That was your first card out. And I 
have the Six of Pentacles. Uh, yeah, on its side. Um, this is an energy of rebalancing. This is somebody who has to, like, if you dish it, you're going to have to take just as much. So, I, again, noticing a lot of this karmic rebalancing, it, it's no surprise that we're just about to enter that eclipse season at the end of the month. I think the first one hits us on April 30th here in the United States. It's a solar eclipse, I think. Um, feel free to check my math on that. But um, with this Nine of Cups out here twice, it's kind of this undeniable, you, again, you got a lot of repeats in here. So if this is your story and you know that something's about to catch up with you, you're going to be okay. It may be uncomfortable. It may be uncomfortable for a little while, whatever this truth is that's coming out. And I'm going to dig a little bit deeper in a minute here. Um, but it's going to be okay. You've got this strength card here, which, you know, you're going to survive this. Um, but this nine of cups, the first time it came out in the reverse, this is someone who's rethinking their actions. I just saw 1101 on the counter. Um, this is someone who, here's the thing. We are not meant to have perfect lives. We are not meant to see 1111 on the counter. Um, we are not meant to have perfect lives. We're not meant to have be perfect people. Um, you, you're going to do things. You're going to say things. You're going to develop habits or issues in your life that have to be fixed. And that is why we have this strength energy come in. Whoever I'm reading for here... You're going to make it through this. And there's this energy of honesty. Um, like the first step is admitting the truth. Like whatever is going on here in your life. Um, and I'm, I, again, I'm not sure what it is. But I see someone ending something and getting the heck out of Dodge. And it feels so much better. There's an energy of independence that comes to you, whoever you are. Um, I've got the Nine of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck, which is the Minor Arcana of the Empress card, which is usually someone who is single, independent, and lacking in codependencies, which whoever I'm reading for here, oh, this is some codependency faux show. And it, it doesn't matter if we're dealing with substances here that we have addictions to or toxic relationships that we're very embedded and enmeshed with. Um, you were meant to have this experience, and I don't mean for that to sound like kind of sick and twisted, like, oh, you were meant for a life of darkness or something. No, but you were meant to have experiences that are going to challenge you, and they're going to ask you to elevate yourself. This person, whoever I'm reading for, is going to make that decision. They're going to make some kind of a major change here, and this is possibly the week, possibly the month that this change starts to take place. Whoever I'm reading for, for, I feel like this wheel of fortune energy has been in, in the reverse energy has been present for this person for some time and this person has now found themselves at the bottom of a well and they're not entirely sure how to get themselves out of it. I'm telling you whatever this is once you cut it out of your life that's when things start to improve for you. I have the star card here on the bottom of the deck. The star card really talks about blessings that are very unique to us. They can belong, they can be soulmate energies. They can be unique talents, um, things that you are meant to have. They're just part of your life path and they can't be taken away from you. Sometimes we have to work to receive those blessings. Yes, they're always going to be a part of your path, but sometimes we have to work to uncover them. Sometimes they get covered up with um, three-dimensional debris, life issues, upbringing issues, genetic legacy issues, and it's our job to get to the bottom of it, get rid of it, so that the truth of you can really shine. That is that star card energy. Yeah, some of you are going to have to physically relocate. Um, some of you are in really, really bad relationships, and you're going to have to actually pack your bags and move. That's not easy, um, especially when you're staring down the barrel of this, you know. Um, but that Six of Swords is an energy of moving oneself to safety. 
you may be responsible for other people as well. And it's a reminder if you are responsible for other people that you are responsible for moving them to safety as well. I have the Hierophant in the reverse. This speaks to a broken contract. Um, the Hierophant it, and the Two of Cups in the reverse right under that. And I, ha I saw this Eight of Swords under there as well. I'm just going to put this down while we talk about this for a minute. Um, the Hierophant in the reverse is a card of contracts. It's a card of marriage. It's a card of um, legal bind legally binding relationships. Um, the Two of Cups in the reverse. Two of Cups is one of our soulmate energies, but it is um, it can it, it speaks to partnership. And I have the Hierophant in the reverse and the Two of Cups in the reverse. Both of them. It feels like you have a broken contract here with someone. And I feel like whoever I'm talking to here, I feel like you were promised the world possibly and you ended up with nothing. And I get the impression you haven't really shared your truth. There's like a real tightness here in your throat where you don't feel like you can tell anybody what you've experienced because you're afraid of maybe judgment of some sort. Um, whoever you are, I feel like you're very much alone, like you feel very alone and you know that there's something much better for you out there. It's almost like, um, all you want to do is get on the other side of this gate. You see, um, for some of you, you're just going to have to break this contract to get yourself to safety in some way. Okay. The high priestess on the bottom of the deck, that's Pisces energy. Um, that's um, someone who's always known like deep down inside the truth. Um, but I, I feel like I'm reading for someone who's very tight-lipped about things because there's like telling the truth is very exposing. I feel like I'm reading for someone who fears other people's judgment an awful lot. And they feel like they're going to be judged for having stayed in this situation, this relationship, this toxicity for as long as they have. And people are going to say, why? Why did you let that happen to you? Why did you give in to that? Why did you stay as long as you did? Ugh, no. It's, it doesn't really work that way. People who love you will love you and it won't matter the who's, the what's, the where's, the why's. They'll just say, come over to my house and we'll take care of this together. Yes. Yeah, I have the judgment in the reverse. That's exactly what I was saying. Someone who is fearing the judgment of other people. Oh, kiddo. You sweetie pie. Here's the thing, if that is all that is keeping you in this shitty, shitty, shitty situation, then you need to get the hell out of there. Um, that you cannot live your life based on other people's opinions of you. And I know that is just like first grader information, but sometimes we need to have it told to us. Whoever you are, you have a life to live. And on the other side of this locked gate, there is something much, much better for you, much healthier for you. But you are going to have to make some changes. You are going to have to get up and make these changes. You're going to have to either pack your bags. You're going to have to change your habits. You're going to have to do something to get yourself out of the bottom of this well. And it will happen. It may take a few weeks. It may take a few months. Heck, you could even be there tomorrow. I don't know what your situation is like. Like, but I know you can't stay here any longer. I got the Queen of Swords in the reverse. This is somebody who's very much afraid of what someone else is going to say. If you are in a, an abusive relationship of any kind, I understand. It's really hard to make a lot of changes because not only is there's just an awful lot of distortion there. And it can be very confusing. 
but you ha at some point you're going to have to make a choice to choose yourself and choose if you have children choose them if you can't even choose yourself choose them okay um you can't live your life worried about what other people are going to think what other people are going to say Seven of Pentacles in the reverse. Yes, you can't wait any longer. This has to be done right away. The Seven of Pentacles is all about waiting. Waiting to see what's going to happen. Waiting to see if it's going to get better. Waiting to see if this person uh, makes the changes they need to make. We can't wait anymore. We got to make a choice like right now. I have the Emperor in the reverse. Oh boy. That is Aries, masculine energy doesn't have to be those zodiac signs. It's also divine masculine energy, but when it's in the reverse, it, it all of the zodiac sign or the meanings go out the window because the emperor in the reverse is someone who uses their power um, for control. It's, it's less about helping other people. It's more about maintaining control. It's very tyrannical energy. And it's someone that you can't anticipate what their reactions are going to be like. Because there's an energy of mental instability with this person. It's extremely stressful. Everything you do, can, it, you never know when you're going to inflame this person, inflame this situation. There's, I've got the five of pentacles again. Um, this is someone who's afraid of being vulnerable in front of this person because you're afraid that this, this, I feel like you've been engaged with someone or something that every time you get inflamed, that, that, that you inflame this person, they really know how to hit your buttons and make it really hurt. But you can stay here or you can go. I mean, you're not going to see any change in this person. I have the Knight of Pentacles in the reverse. There's not going to be any growth here. There's not going to be any change here with you staying this way. And you have too much love in your heart. You're very sensitive. Um, you may be an empath. Mm. Mm -hmm. You may be highly intuitive. And I, I feel like I'm reading for someone here who is really judging themselves harshly for not getting themselves out of this sooner, but also for not... It, I, I feel like you saw the red flags in this situation and you kind of swept them aside. And it's it's not your fault that this happened. There's an energy of some... There's like a lot of distortion and fog around your brain here. Some of you may have developed alcohol issues um, because you were trying to medicate this situation. And I have the Ace of Swords out again. The only way out of this is truth, honesty, clarity. This is somebody who says, I feel like this is going to hurt me. Yeah. Um, Ace of Swords. I mean, but it is what it is. The truth is the truth, right? That's why it's the truth. It's not about someone's opinion. It's just the truth. And I think whoever you are, if you were to sit down and start writing all of this down, writing down all of your feelings, writing down all of the instances, writing down all of the circumstances behind this, you could fill a legal binder full of, is that even a thing, a legal binder? I don't know. You could fill a binder full of why you can't stay here anymore. And if you need to do that, go on ahead and do that. But I think you're at this crossroads now. Let's talk about what happens when you get yourself out of this. Oh, good. Okay. So what's that? Oh, oh, I'm so glad I pulled that one out too. Um, so this is what I'm going to tell you. 
um, in order for you to make this change, you're going to have to start talking to people again. There's a real energy of isolation here, and that is what happens here um, when you're in any kind of toxic relationship, especially if you're dealing with someone who has narcissistic traits or tendencies, which um, that emperor in the reverse, that's like your captain A1 narcissist. And I know we throw that term around way too often right now these days, but that that is the situation here. All right. If you are in this situation, you're going to have to start opening yourself up to your friends and your family and the people that you have somehow managed to cut off over the last few months, few years, whatever it's been. Um, a lot of you have either consciously or subconsciously been forced to isolate yourself away from these people. That's, that's very common in narcissist empath energy, like relationships. Um, you guys are going to have to start talking to the people who matter the most. This would be your very close friends, um, from long ago family. Okay. Um, you're going to have to start relying on their support and you're going to have to be honest with them about what it is you're actually going through here because people want to help you in this situation. Um, there is with this queen of pentacles energy on its side, you are going to have to probably work harder than you've worked in a while. Um, maybe physically work harder or mentally or something, but there's an energy of, um, stability and rebalancing that is coming towards towards you once you make this change, once you make this transition out of this energy. It's not going to be easy right away. And I have the sun card that comes out on its side, which is an energy of happiness. It's the happiest card in the deck. Look it up on the Google if you don't believe me. The sun is always touted as being the happiest card in the deck. It's also about healing. It's about warmth and it's about restoration of yourself. This will happen it's not going to happen right away. It's going to take some time for you to rebuild yourself here, to rebuild your self-esteem, to rebuild your connection to yourself, to rebuild your finances, possibly rebuild your life entirely. I have the hermit in the reverse, which means you have to start talking to people. I've got the empress in the upright position. Um, that's a card of Virgo, but it's also divine feminine energy. Um, you... It, if you are this empress, you can't stay with an emperor in the reverse. At one point, this is what I was saying. I was like shiny objects, kind of, with this seven of swords. It's like you were promised one thing and you got another thing. It was very illusionary. Now that you see the truth and now that you understand that this is not going to improve, you have a responsibility. The empress has a responsibility. If the emperor is going to go off and be in the reverse, the empress has a responsibility to maintain the empire. You need to get everyone to safety, even if that means moving the entire damn empire into another place. All right. Oh, um, a lot of you, you're going to be really surprised at how much better your life is once you move on from this. Um, a lot of you are going to I, like I said, it's it's not going to be easy right away, but over the course of however much time, some of you are going to be buying a new home. Some of you, there's a windfall of money that comes to you. When you start doing what you know you need to do deep down in your heart, I swear, it's it's like God starts to help you when you pray and you ask for help, you will get it. Um, I always say, like, in the darkest times of my life, what I felt the most were other people's prayers for me. And I could tell when other people were praying for me because they knew I was going through something difficult. Ask your friends and your family for help. You will get it. They will be happy to do that for you. And you are going to start to see your life change um, rapidly. I have the eight of wands. It's almost like um, a telephone tree of assistance. Telephone tree. I don't know what that word is. Telephone tree. What I see is like a call list, like people calling one another, like a network of friends that start to um, help you get the help that you need. 
help you get the help you need. You know what I mean. But you can't keep doing this alone. You can't keep sitting in isolation like this and experiencing this, especially when you know that now is the time to make this change. All right? All right. That was your reading for today. Thank you so much for letting me read your cards for you. I love you all. If this is your story, oh, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you right now as soon as I turn off this uh, camera right here. I love you all. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're so inclined, and I will see you tomorrow. Mwah.